If there's one thing that Nintendo does consistently right, it's that they make really good video games. So many good games, in fact, that there's seemingly a never-ending amount of them. From Mario to Smash to Animal Crossing, Nintendo has enjoyed video game prominence since the 80s. And it's all thanks to decades of standout consoles and signature franchises. But for some of these franchises, Nintendo has seemed to turn a blind eye. And despite an early following, they've gotten less than desirable treatment in the modern age. Take for example F-Zero. This classic racer actually predated the Mario Kart franchise, and was a nice compliment to Mario Kart's more laid-back, casual feel thanks to the faster, more aggressive nature of F-Zero. It seemed like these games could coexist and appeal to racing fans of all types, but as Mario Kart continued its upward trajectory into the mega-selling Mario Kart 8 Deluxe that it is today, F-Zero's fate unfortunately became apparent when F-Zero Climax, released in 2004, became the franchise's most recent title. F-Zero suffered an extreme fate, but some others experienced the pain of fizzling out slowly. Star Fox was undeniable S-tier gaming in the 90s. This game was so badass back in the day, and it still holds up as genuine fun. Star Fox Adventures for GameCube was well received, but then the franchise really started to go downhill after the 2000s. When your best game in a decade is a remake, you know it's a rough time for Star Fox fans. After the absolute dumpster fire that was Star Fox Zero, is there any hope that a franchise this forsaken could make a glorious comeback, not only in quality, but in sales, reviving any and all reason for Nintendo to continue with this franchise? Absolutely. How? With the fucking Nintendo Switch. Hey kids, have you ever heard of Metroid? It used to be the untouchable standard for dark, gritty shooters. And then Other M came out. And then Federation Force came out. And then Samus Returns came out, thank god. But the console that produced the first good Metroid game in 10 years went extinct. So now, I guess the franchise's only hope is to make Metroid Dread now and have it sell 3 million copies- wait, what?! So you're telling me that the first good Metroid game in 10 years doesn't even crack the top 50 3DS bestsellers, but you put another good Metroid game on Switch, and it does 3 million? Well shitfire, I reckon this here Nintendo Switch might just be a real hoot then, huh boys? It's like Metroid never left. In fact, it's never done better. Dread has set the record for sales in the franchise, by a good margin. This is a franchise that in the last 14 years had two mediocre games and one good game that barely sold half a million units on one of the most popular consoles ever. And Dread comes back and does 3 million. And as long as it wasn't just a fever dream I had five years ago, Metroid Prime 4 is going to be pretty sick as well. And that could even set a new sales record for Metroid. I would not be surprised in the slightest. So I would group franchises like Mario, Pokemon, Zelda, obviously these are the flagships of Nintendo. And then you got all of your supporting series that all have a following. This is where I would put franchises like Metroid, Star Fox, and another franchise that I think is going to have a very bright future, Kirby. Kirby is by no means a neglected franchise, and has consistently received enjoyable games for a long time, with some true standouts in the mix. However, I've always seen Kirby as popular, but not that popular outside of Kirby fans. It's just one of those really niche franchises. So when I saw Forgotten Land, it was the first time that I was genuinely hyped for a new Kirby game. And man, did it deliver. You guys who watched my review know it's my favorite game from the last few years, and the sales numbers reflect its quality. Two million units in two weeks is incredible success for this franchise. Compare this to a game like Planet Robobot, a game many still like even more than Forgotten Land, and even something of that quality only reached 37th all-time in sales for the 3DS, having its total sales passed in less than two weeks by Forgotten Land. And again, it's not like the 3DS was an obscure console. It's literally one of the top sellers of all time. So what is it about the Switch that's causing all of this success? Well, the first thing you can attest this to is the fact that Dread and Forgotten Land are just really great games. They deliver completely different gameplay experiences and definitely different degrees of challenge. However, it seems like hard games aren't even a turnoff anymore, as Dread had record-breaking success and Elden Ring completely took over the gaming industry when it released. So, having good games is a start. But again, Metroid and Kirby had prior good games on a very popular console, and they didn't do anything near their Switch counterparts. So, maybe it's the console itself. 
at home and portable, a true testament to diverse gaming. It has lacking hardware compared to others, and it has its share of technical issues, as well as a ton of controversy. But at the end of the day, it has Nintendo's name on it, it innovated, has incredible exclusives, and makes games geared for literally every age group, with a few exceptions of course like Dread, and that still sold well despite not going for Nintendo's biggest demographics. But honestly, I think it's both of these things combined with the internet. These days, gaming news is just news. It's common, everyday stuff that we see a ton of just scrolling on Twitter for a few minutes. Information and word of mouth is more accessible than ever. And I think newer fans of Nintendo saw a lot of the excitement that lifelong fans had for games like Metroid Dread, and it turns into a new generation of gamers appreciating what we grew up on. Whatever the reason, Nintendo has struck gold with the Switch, and I think there's no better time to properly restore franchises like F-Zero. Think about it, classic retro, cult following, years of neglect, coming back on the biggest and best Nintendo console ever. Hell, all they had to do was port Mario Kart 8 on a Switch with DLC, and it went gangbusters. I see no reason why people wouldn't be interested in another racing franchise that could focus on more skill-based driving. But hey, what do I know? Maybe F-Zero is better off dead and not even the Switch could revive it. But at this point, I don't believe that's the case. I think it would sell because of the hype and the potential quality that an F-Zero on Switch could provide. Or that Star Fox could provide, hopefully. Or that Pikmin could provide. Or that Kid Icarus could provide. Or that Punch-Out could provide. Anyways, those are my thoughts on this Nintendo Switch effect and why I think there's no better time to take chances with older franchises we know and love. Let me know your thoughts on everything I talked about in this video and what franchises you would love to see come back on Switch. As always, thanks for watching. Have a great day. Deuces! Well, shit, Fire Metroid on Switch is fucking great until you try playing Dread with Joy Con Drift. That challenge shits all over Elden Ring, I reckon. Yeehaw! <laughs>